What's up guys, Velocity from Pitchfork Academy back with another Unreal Engine 5 material tutorial. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a method to eliminate texture stretching on your materials by utilizing world aligned textures, also called triplanar mapping. The benefits of setting up your textures to be world aligned textures is obvious when you begin to duplicate your mesh and you'll see the texture seamlessly transition across the surface with no seam as well as whenever you reposition, scale, or rotate your mesh, you'll notice that the texture does not move with the mesh. It sort of stays in place, which is really handy when you're building worlds on a grid-like system, which is common in game development. But just before we get started, I wanted to give a friendly reminder that my Patreon, Velocity's Vault, is a great way to support me and get direct access to download all of my material and graphic tutorial project files. I also have an ultimate tier available if you'd like a little bit more guidance on the art style of your project, maybe your material setups, or really anything graphics related. And don't forget, you can also join our free Discord, the Pitchfork Academy, if you want to connect with other creators or maybe even get some help with one of your projects. All right, guys, here we are inside of Unreal Engine 5.7. However, this will work in any version of the engine. Now, the first thing I want to do is just to go ahead and grab some high quality textures from the Fab Marketplace and the Quixel. Uh, textures. So I'm going to go over to the window tab and then down to fab. From here, what I like to do is search for Quixel. That brings up the Quixel Mega Scan textures. And then I'll search what texture I'm looking for. So in this case, I'll search for stone. And then I like to filter at the top uh, by price and only show free products. And then on the left, I'll select material and textures. Next, I'll just choose a random one that I think looks good. I like this curated stone facade, so I'll click that one. And the medium quality is fine. This is going to be a 2K. Then high quality is 4K. Raw is 8K. Low quality is 1K. The medium quality will be just fine. All right, now that we have that, we can open this up. It creates a new folder structure, by the way. So if I go to content, we now have a new folder called fab. And then inside of here, you can go all the way down until we find the auto-generated material, which we won't use, and then the textures, and that's what we're interested in. So I'll just go ahead and save all, and it will save those textures. And now that we have those, I'll go back to my content browser and make a new folder for materials. That way I keep things organized. And then inside here, I'll just make another folder, maybe called stru uh, structures. I'm thinking things like walls and floors, things of that nature. Uh, it's a really good use for the world aligned texture setup. So what I'll do next is right click, create a new material, and I'll call it M underscore structure. From here, I'll double click to open it up and drag it on my screen. And the first thing that I want to do is right click and search for a world aligned texture node. When we hover this, you can see that it reads tiles, a texture in world space. This means that regardless of your mesh's position or scale, the texture that's wrapped around it will remain intact in the scale that you set. Uh, it's really handy for creating sort of static structures of, like buildings, walls, floors, uh, because you don't have to worry about sort of how you set up your meshes as much. And the texture will just sort of always wrap around and continue seamlessly around your mesh. So really handy feature. And we will need two of these, so I'll just duplicate that. And then we'll also need another one called world aligned, whoops, uh, world aligned normal. Very important that the normal one uses this node because normal maps need to have some extra calculation just to make sure that they appear correct when using world aligned textures. So this has a couple of extra, um, nodes inside of it to make sure that it looks correct. As you can see, it takes a texture object for the input. So we will right click and search for texture object. This is similar to a texture sample, except it's sort of just a reference to the texture. The, these nodes here are actually sampling the texture. So just really quickly to show you how it works, if we double click on any of these nodes here, it'll open up the function. So uh, as you can see here, there's three texture samples um, that are taking our texture object as an input, and it samples it on the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis, and then projects it all back together to create this sort of 
world aligned texture setup. It's also called triplanar mapping. Uh, tri being for the three different axes, and it creates this really nice, useful feature. So we have our texture object here. We'll just wire that in, and I will right click and convert this to a parameter, and I'll name it base color. And I'll leave it that texture for now by default. I'll copy it down here, wire it into text. Sometimes it renames it text and it forgets the rest. Not sure why. Uh, I'll rename this one to ORM for occlusion, roughness, and metallic. And then I'll duplicate this again for our normal. So I'll rename this to be normal. And then we have uh, our texture size next. So I'll just hold S on my keyboard and click for a scalar value. And I'll call this scale. I'll set the default value to be 400 and wire this into the texture size on each of these world aligned nodes. So that way they all use the same scale because they're from the same texture set. And then I will do another scalar parameter and I'll call this projection contrast. I'll set this to be a default value of one, um, but basically what this does is it controls the uh, literally the contrast between the different sides of the projection to be a little bit more sharp um, so it's not as smooth. So this can be useful in certain scenarios where you have maybe more of a rounded edge that you need to apply this material to, but it's a nice control to have. All right, next we can go ahead and click on our base color, and then I'm just going to go find my textures. So I know that they're in fab, mega scan, surfaces, stone, medium, and then textures. So with this base color node selected, we'll see on the left here, the material expression texture base, and I'll just drag in my base color there. So now it's using that. I'll do the same for the ORM, use this texture here, and the normal. You'll see it'll update the sampler type to the correct one. So normal uses normal, the ORM uses a mask sampler type, and then base color uses color. So that's all correct. And now that we have that, we can just add a few controls in case you want to be able to adjust your textures a little bit. So one thing I like to do is, um, so we need to drag off of X, Y, Z, by the way, so we get all three axes projected. And I'll get a desaturation node. Just in case you want to make your texture grayscale before you multiply color, it can be a little handy trick in case your texture comes in at a color that you don't like. So I'll just hold S and click for a scaler, and I'll call it desaturation. Hopefully I spelled that right. And I'll set the default value at zero. So no change by default. And then a value of one would make it fully desaturated. And you could go negative and add, it would actually be more saturated. So that's a little, little tip. Off of desaturation, I'll get a multiply. And then I'll hold three on my keyboard for three vector and right click, convert to parameter. So now we have a vector three parameter and I'll call it color wire this into B. And I just want to double click this and set the color on the value to be fully bright. So it'll be white. That way it's no change by default because anything multiplied by one or white would just be itself. Next, we have our mask texture. And since we need these separate channels to be um, individual pins, as you can see here, we have our R channel, which is our occlusion. G channel, which is roughness, and then our B channel for metallic, which in this case, stone is a metallic, so that's why it's black. We need to drag off of XYZ and get a split components node. So R is our ambient occlusion, so I'll drag that into ambient occlusion, and G is our roughness, so I'll drag off and actually just get a multiply and a scalar value by holding S and clicking. Then we have roughness. I'll set the default to be one because we don't want any change by default. And then now we have our roughness control and I'll wire this into roughness. Just in case you want your material to be a little bit shinier or rougher, you would lower or increase this. I'll copy and paste both of those nodes and rename this top one here now to metallic. And this is our B here. So wire in the B channel into the multiply and this goes into metallic. Cool, and now we have our normal. So we want the XYZ texture, not these other ones. So XYZ texture, drag off, and get a flatten 
normal. And this is kind of the opposite of what would be an intensity control. So a value of one here would actually flatten the normal and it would look super smooth and bad. But it is um, a good control to have in case you want it to look a little bit softer or a little bit more intense. You can actually set this value to be negative. So let's get a scalar value by holding S and clicking. And we'll call it normal flatten. And by default, we don't want to flatten our normal. So we'll just plug it in with the value of zero. And I'll drag this over a little bit so that way the wires don't get too crossed and then plug this into normal. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now we can go ahead and save and test out our material. So I'll go back to my content browser, find my materials folder, structures, and then right click on my master material and create a material instance. I'll name this mi underscore stone. And then let's just see how this works. So if I drag it on the floor, it should look pretty great. It looks exactly how I would expect. Um, now let's see how it looks if we drag it on one of these. Awesome, yeah, it actually is the same texture scale and orientation, no matter where you put it or how you scale your mesh. So if I take this mesh and I scale it to be really tall, you can see the texture just sort of extends with it and it doesn't become stretched. So that's really, really handy when you're creating levels um, quickly and you wanna design your levels in a sort of a quicker way. Uh, can definitely speed things up. And yeah, we can test it on some other things here. And then let's just open up our material instance and just take a real quick look at some of our parameters. Oops, didn't mean to open this up. There we go. So we have our desaturation, metallic, normal control projection, roughness, our textures, and the color. So yeah, desaturation desaturates the texture and then you can of course control the color a little bit easier um, i'm going to leave that at zero metallic won't do anything for this texture because this is stone if this was more of a metal texture this would be a little bit more useful normal flatten this is where i was talking about the um, sort of the softness of the texture so a value of one looks pretty bad because now it's completely flat no normal information uh, and a value of zero is default so 0.5 can soften it a bit, or you can go negative one or negative two, and it will make it even stronger. So it's just something to keep in mind if you want your texture to look a little bit stronger than usual. You can go into the negatives here, but I don't recommend going too low. I, I really wouldn't go more than negative one. Uh, projection contrast. This is when you're on a curved surface. So this is the only really fallback of this material. You can see if you zoom in a lot, um, right about here, you can see it kind of starting to blend over itself. The projection contrast controls that area. So there I went to the extreme there, I went negative, and now it's all messed up, but you wouldn't really ever do that. But a value of one is the default. And then as you increase it, it brings that transition closer and closer. So it's really up to you sort of how um, strong you want that. You can make it a harsh line if, if you wanted to for some reason. But I think any value between 1 and 10 or 20 is good. I'll just leave it at 1. I think it looks fine. And then roughness, of course, is your control for how smooth or rough the surface is. And then scale is the really nice thing because this is the one that when we change, it sort of scales everything all at once. And you don't have to worry about the scale of your mesh. So this is really the, um, the best part about this type of material. And then of course you can swap your textures out and tint your material any color that you desire. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this tutorial on how to set up world aligned textures or triplanar mapping inside of Unreal Engine 5. If you learned anything new at all, it'd mean a lot to us if you left a like on the video and subscribe to our channel as it lets us know that you want to see more videos like this one. This has been Velocity with Pitchfork Academy and I'll see you in the next one.